This is my beastie. This is the Unisys Micropower that I'm going to be using to run my auto transformer and whatever other bits and bobs I can be bothered to plug into it. Doesn't look much. Little unit. There it is. There's its plug on the top. Except that's not a 16 amp plug. That is a 16 amp plug. And that is a 13 amp plug. What's on top is a 63 amp plug. At full load this system can draw up to 40 amps, hence the, the big cable. I can't put a 32 amp plug on it because the cable won't fit. That's something like a 16 square mil 3 core flex. On the front we have a switch for isolation and regulation or isolation mode. The isolation and regulation mode also means it's soft start, so instead of having a big in rush as soon as you knock it on, tripping the breaker, it warms itself up gradually, nice gentle start up. That shows what the regulator is up to. Normally you'll get the middle lights coming on. If the voltage is too low you'll get obviously the low one and well you get the rest. If the fuse is gone you'll get that griping. And we've got a big on off switch at the top. This is the back of the unit. As you can see we've got a distribution board almost like a domestic consumer unit with a 40 amp output breaker for everything which in turn feeds four 15 amp breakers and four 20 amp breakers they then feed these sockets these are 15 amp Hubble twist lock connectors and below we have the 20 amp Hubble twist locks a remote emergency power off connector, the input cable and a big fat earth terminal. These connectors you won't see very often in Britain but you will be familiar with them if you work on street lighting because they're used for the photocell that plugs into the top. Plans for this, give it a fresh coat of paint to get rid of the rusty bits on the top and I'm going to change those connectors out, at least some of the connectors. I'll put a loop in and out so it can measure the current using the current clamp and I'll put a variety of connectors along the bottom then so I can plug in what I like. But I'm buy these weird Hubble twist lock connectors. This is the mains conditioner with the lid off so you can see what's inside it. Not a lot to show really. There's, over here we've got the main logic board not a processor in sight, it's all logic chips on there. Nothing fancy, nothing intelligent. Then we've got the big transformer in the middle. That's the input switch, and you can see just behind the selector between isolation only and isolation and regulation. There's a fan and a whole bunch of thyristors which I'll give you a better look at in a sec and then we have the sockets and interestingly a combined neutral and earth bar I'll have to work on that because at the moment all the neutrals are tied to earth it's an isolation transformer that it isolates the input from the output on the live side but the neutral is connected to earth and beyond your meter the neutral is connected to earth as well so it's not really rigged up as an isolation transformer what I should be able to do is just disconnect all the neutrals and run that to a separate bus bar and jobs are good done. Here's a top view, there's the fan that keeps the thyristors cool and there are the thyristors themselves. Instead of using a mechanical tap changer it uses these to simply select the correct winding from the, the transformer. Obviously it will do that at the zero crossing of the mains waveform so it's a seamless step from one voltage to the next. No sudden spike in the supply. This is a view from the other side. You can see the incoming neutral supply going off to the right hand side. And then all the feeds into the transformer coming from the thyristors in at the different tap voltages at the top. And we've also got an itty bitty transformer over there, which is for running the logic board 
and obviously the thyristors. There we go, that's better. Because the top was rusty, I've given the lid a coat of paint with plenty of lacquer on the top to protect it from scratches and whatnot. At the top of the back then you can see I've changed the back breakers to a set of triple pole ones basically because I didn't have any double pole ones and below that then we have a pair of 25 square mil cable loops so I can measure the current just by hooking a clamp over and we have a new set of output sockets in both cases the left hand socket has an earth connection the right hand one doesn't to allow for more flexibility with what I'm doing let's face it this thing's a test rig so the more options I've got the better I've got it hooked up to a thousand watt floodlight here just as an example and this is what happens when you turn it on what I've also got hooked up now at the end of the orange cable is my emergency cutoff if you look at the switch here, as soon as I let go of the button, off it goes. And it won't restart now until the switch on the front is turned off and back on again. 